If you if you recall what did Bola Ahmed Tinubu do? He raised his IGR. They, I, I think it had to do with the issue of local governments. When he developed local governments up into local government development agencies and things, and President um, President Obasanjo at the time proclaimed it to be some kind of illegality, and he held back local government funds. What Lagos State did was to dig deep and raise its own internally generated revenue. They found creative and effective ways of doing that. And if you look at Lagos State's internally generated revenue over the last 20 years, it's more than, it's gone up more than a thousand fold. And so that's the kind of thing we will do in Edo State. But I'm. Wait a minute, what did I just hear? I told you also that Aso Ihodalo is intelligent, that he's competent. But listening to him now, he doesn't appear like someone that is intelligent. He appears like a typical politician, someone that is talking politics without talking real policies. Hmm. Edo people, this is a threat to your collective coexistence. You should do everything to resist what Aso Igadalo is saying. Aso Igadalo saying he wants to implement Tinibu tax system in Edo state is a threat to your survivor. It's just like when Tinibu said he will continue from where Buari stopped. You all know how it's going right now. Why should you resist this? Listen to me. During the election campaign, Tinibu handlers told us that Tinibu increased the IGR of Lagos. Hence, he's the best to be president. Many Nigerians do not understand what IGR means. They know it is internally generated revenue, but they don't know how it is achieved. Unfortunately, Many politicians lash on this bliss ignorance from Nigerians to campaign using IGR. But you should do everything possible to resist any politician that is using IGR to campaign because that politician is not after your welfare. When you listen to P2B critically, most of you, you say you love P2B, you are after P2B. When you listen to him critically, all through his campaign period, he never talked about IGR. All he talked about is moving Nigeria from consumption to production. All he talk about is improving agriculture. All he talk about is improving the healthcare. All he talk about is improving education. He never mentioned IGR because that is the worst model of development any politician or any government can lash onto. Now, let me break down what IGR means to you using the model used by Tinibu in Lagos. I mean, the same model that Aso Igadalo is using to campaign to a light. IGR means taxes in simpler term, taxes. Taxes can come in different form. It can come in the form of salary tax. Most of you that receive salary sometimes they cut your tax. It can come in the form of company or business taxes, import duties. If you are importing goods into the country, you pay custom and excise duties. All those things are form of taxes. It can come in the form of bank charges. If you notice, you notice that whenever you do electronic transfer on your mobile app, they charge you. Those things are taxes. That money they are charging you is going to the government. You all know about the stamp duty, the 50 naira stamp duty. All these things are taxes. Now, there's what we call value added tax. VAT. When you go to the supermarket to buy something, if you check very well, you will see value added tax that have been added to that goods that you're buying. Sometimes when you make calls, there are value added taxes to the calls you are making. All these things are a form of taxes. Now, you have the removal of fuel subsidy. Removal of fuel subsidy is taxes because this is what government subsidizes for the people. Now, the government is removing that thing and the people, they are now paying for consuming fuel. All those things are taxes. You have interest rate. For instance, when President Wama Lubari handed over to Bola in 2023, when you go to the bank to borrow 1 million naira, you are going to pay an interest rate of 160,000 naira. Of course, it will be spread over the month. But currently, if you go to the bank to borrow 1 million naira, you will pay 266,000 naira on that same 1 million naira. Why? The interest rate has increased from 16% under President Muhammadu Bari to 26.6% under President Bola Tinibu. All these are form of taxes. Now you have levies. These are levies that you see the arboros, they go to the park to collect from drivers. These are the levies that you see some people go to shops to collect from your mothers and your fathers that own small shop in your vicinity. All these things are levies. All these things are form of government taxes. And these things form the basis of IGR in a state. 
the list is exhaustive we just have to mention this few now when you look at what is happening in kenya today they are protecting against increments in taxes the government introduced a b in the parliament that will see to the increment in the prices of food items that is why they went to the street to campaign against it so when a politician says that i will increase the state igro he's simply saying i will increase all the affirmation look at lagos state for instance it is touted as a state of tout and aburus. When Tinubu became the governor, he brought in all manner of tout and abu. Of course, when you live in Lagos, you know that this will take time to harass drivers and collect levies from them. Enciolomo is heading this department. There are those who go about to collect shop levies from shop owners. Tinubu daughter is heading this department. Then you have company paying taxes to the Lagos state government. You need to understand that during the passenger regime, Many companies move into Lagos. This company paid taxes to the Lagos state government. This helped to increase the Lagos state IGRO. Tinibu did not beat any of these companies. So them paying taxes is not because of Golame Tinibu. It is because of the presence of the federal government in Lagos state. Some are private like the banks, others are government owned. Tinibu ended up making Lagosians without adding any value to their life. He was able to get away with all of this because of the presence of these multinational companies. I hope you're following me. Now he's the president of Nigeria. He's using the same tax model he used in Lagos. Since assuming offices, Tinibu is taxing the living hair out of Nigerians. From fuel subsidy to bank charges to interest rate to electricity tariff hike to custom duties, I can tell you that Nigeria IDHARO has definitely increased under Bola Me Tinibu. Watch out from his handler from now. They will start using this to brag but after listening to this video i'm sure you will resist that whenever they come up with it but now let me ask you a question if bola Tinibu comes up today and say that i've increased the igro of nigeria will you be happy if he announced that i am sure you would definitely not be happy why because it does not reflect on your life and the life of average nigerians on the streets come on Tinibu is making the living hair out of nigerians nigerians are hungry look at nigerians cannot even afford basic food anymore a bag of rice is 80,000 naira gary has increased now this whole thing is not because of dollar crunch or whatever it is because of the taxes that tinibu has increased in nigeria the cost of production cost of producing anything including gary has triple times what it was before that is why the prices are also increased when you go to the supermarket to buy things you will notice that what you used to buy for instance big meat that we used to buy 200 naira is now being sold for 1000 naira why the cost of producing milk has increased when the owner of milk go to the bank to borrow money what they used to pay as interest rate before is not what they are paying now they will put all these things into the price of the goods that is you are the one that is bearing the brunt of the taxes that tinibu has increased in nigeria tinibu has successfully impoverished the life of nigerians to increase the igr so you see IGRO is not and will never be a good model of development. We will come back to this. This is what Asu Igadolo is promising a do light. So in case you don't understand that statement, I hope you understand what he's trying to do. If you make the mistake of making him the governor and he start implementing these taxes, you will definitely feel the brunt of it. A do business composition is not like Lagos. Unlike Lagos, where we have multinational companies, we have the government seaport, we have the airport, you have celebrities' presence, which is greatly missing in a do state. All you will see in a do state are arboros harassing taxi drivers. They will go and harass your parents in their shop to collect levies for the government. When Peter Obi was a governor in Anambra state for eight years, he did not focus on IGR, he focused on the HDI. HGI, which means Human Development Indices, is the measure used all over the world for measuring development. It means improved healthcare, schools, literacy rate, security, pulling people out of poverty. P2B stopped Aboros from marauding in Anambra state and harassing people. He did not tax the people to death, yet he was able to outperform any governor during his time, including Bolame Tinibu that tax people to death and he also saved so much money into Anambra State account. Nigerian politicians are aware that most Nigerians do not understand what good government is all about. That is why they bamboozle you with IGR. Any politician campaigning with IGR is a threat and should be avoided. 
The reason why Nigeria is poor today is because our politicians focus on IGRU rather than HDI. No government should talk about IGRU without HDI. Before you tax the people, give them education, give them healthcare, create jobs for them, provide security, make the environment conducive for them. These are the main components of development. No nation has ever developed with taxes, but rather GDP. Another campaign promise Nigerian politicians launched onto is to build good. For God's sake, what is this foolery all about? Some of them even hold ceremony to commission road. Look, look at what Wike is doing in Abuja. Holding ceremony to commission road and people are applauding him. How many schools have he built or renovated? How many hospitals has he built? What about security? What about job creation? This is what you should be asking from your politician. Tinibu is one year in office. During his event, marking one year in office, he commissioned road, he did not commission schools, he didn't commission any factories, no hospital, and the people were celebrating in common Nigerians. We have we should we should move past this level of mediocrity. These politicians know that most Nigerians are naive and won't ask critical questions. Rather than talking about IGRU, Asio Igadalo should talk about how he will create jobs for a dolite, stop the rate of courtism, increase security, build schools. He should tell you how he intends to make Edo State the credo of education, revamp Edo State schools to be the best in Nigeria, ensure Edo State rank first in Wayek and other examination, improve the security structure in Edo State and including the healthcare. He should tell you how he intends to create jobs in Edo State. Come on, this is what you should be asking him, not about IGR. None of you should celebrate what he's telling you. It's a threat to your life. Go and listen to Olumide Akwata whenever he meets the people. He will tell them that each world will have a health center. It shows he's putting their welfare first. The reason why most politicians focus on IGRU is because it makes more money available to them. I'm not saying IGRU is bad. I'm not saying the government should not raise revenue. But before you raise revenue, you should ensure that you have created what will bring that revenue. You shouldn't go to the pocket of the people and steal money from them, just like what the federal government is doing. They are taking money from you without giving you jobs. Revenue is good, but what you should be asking yourself is, what are they using this revenue for? Most of them are focused on IGRU because they need more money to sponsor their outlandish lifestyle. You should start by asking Obaseke to account for every IGRU that he has collected in Edo State. What did he use that money for? Let him show you the project. You should be able to assess if this project commensurate with the level of IGRU that he has increased and the level of allocation that has come into the state. This is what you should be doing. You should be holding your government accountable. And of course, Obaseke should be scrutinized because he's about to bring in somebody that will continue from where he stopped. If you don't question him, you will not know the direction where this man is taking you to. But I'm telling you today, don't make the mistake of voting in PDP, vote in Labour Party, vote in Olumide Abata. He is the best. Olumide Abata is a people-centric leader. He will care for Edo State, he will care for Edo people. And I want to tell you today, Edo State will be okay. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.